I would like to start this video by showing you a number of photos and ask if you see which photos were photographed with an APS-C crop camera or with a full frame camera. After the pictures, I will show you the results. Here are the results. Perhaps a big surprise, but all these photos were taken with APS-C crop sensor cameras. Hi, my name is Wim Balz and I am a professional artist from Belgium. In this video, I would like to explain to you why I switched from full frame camera to an APS-C sensor camera. In my case, I went from the Nikon D810 full frame to the D7500 crop camera. Have you ever made this switch from full frame to APS-C crop sensor? Then be sure to tell us in the comments. It is impossible to keep up with the amount of YouTube videos that praise the full frame cameras for their shallow depth of field. Well, let that be one of the reasons why I switched to APS-C. At an aperture value of f2.8, I simply had too little depth of field to have a large part in focus. As you may know, I often photograph in zoos for my paintings or in other locations where the light is dim. That's why I often shoot at f2.8 or f2. With a full frame I simply have too little depth of field so that I have too little information in the photo. Of course I could shoot at f4, but that would increase the ISO further or I would have to use slower shutter speeds. That's why I always had my crop sensor camera with me. And in the long run, the full frame camera always stayed at home. Here you can clearly see the difference in depth of field at the same f-stop. As a reference photo, I needed as much detail as possible, which is why the crop sensor camera was my preference. For those who are interested, I ended up making this painting from this photo. I would like to say something about depth of field. The photos that we find most iconic are almost always photographed with a greater depth of field than for example f1.4 on a full frame camera. Most of these shots were in the f3.5 to f11 range. The extra depth of field with an APS-C camera is of course also useful for macro photography, where you naturally already have a shallow depth of field. The extra crop factor of 1.5 also gives you a bit more distance to your subject. Very useful for animals that are easily frightened and run away or fly away. The extra depth of field comes in very handy when you're taking a portrait of more than one person. An aperture of f2.8 quickly puts one person in focus while the other is out of focus. Unless that's your intention, you will have to squeeze the aperture more with a full frame camera to create more depth of field, which results in higher ISO values and increases the risk of noise. With an APS-C camera, you immediately have more depth of field at f2.8, which means that you can initially use lower ISO values. An APS-C sensor camera has theoretically less dynamic range than a full frame sensor. But let's take a look at that in context. The Nikon D810 full frame camera has a dynamic range of 14.8 stops. The Nikon D7500 crop sensor camera has a dynamic range of 14 stops. In practice, this difference is extremely minimal. Much more important is to expose your photos correctly and that applies to both full frame and crop sensor cameras. If we compare these values with the traditional slides that are unforgivable in poor exposure, 
you will realize that this difference is negligible. You should know that slides have been used professionally for years and have achieved great results. If this limited dynamic range is enough for Steve McCurry's iconic photos, then 14 stops on an APS-C crop sensor camera is more than enough. That 0.8 stop difference with a full frame camera isn't going to make a difference. The advantage of a crop sensor camera is that you create a longer range with your lenses due to the crop of the sensor. With this 300mm PF lens from Nikon, you create a field of view equivalent to a 450mm lens on a full frame. In terms of weight, you don't have to carry a 400 or 500mm lens with you, as would be the case with a full frame camera. Your back will thank you at the end of the day. Lenses specifically made for crop sensor cameras are lighter because they require less glass. That also translates to price, with full frame lenses being more expensive. In the end, I only used the full frame camera to photograph my paintings. This was mainly due to the sensor resolution, which was 36 megapixels, compared to the 21 of the APS-C sensor camera. But in the meantime, I photograph my paintings as panoramic landscapes and the different photos are merged in one mouse click in Capture One Pro. This allowed me to easily create reproductions of up to 45 megapixels and more, depending on the proportions of my paintings. So at that point I no longer needed the heavy full frame camera and it ended up on a shelf collecting dust. By the way, the term full frame is more of a marketing term invented by camera manufacturers. The term refers to the full range of a 35mm film. But compared to a medium format or large format camera, a full frame camera turns out to have a decent crop as you can see here. But by using the term full frame, the manufacturers try to make you believe that you are missing something as long as you choose a sensor that is smaller. As long as you don't use a full frame camera, you're not full into photography. Absurd of course, but a clever marketing trick. Many photographers love cinematic and cinematographic images and therefore think they need full frame. Well, let me wake them up from their dream. Almost all Hollywood movies are filmed with so-called Super 35 cameras. Let that sensor almost be the same as an APS-C sensor camera, as you can see in this image. Well, you could not get great bokeh with a crop sensor camera, they say. This is of course really sheer nonsense. Let me show you this comparison. To show the background blur, I took a picture of this rose with a 35mm lens on the full frame camera and a 24mm on the crop sensor camera. As you can see, the same aperture number is used. Both photos have a similar background blur. Here are a few more examples that show the bokeh of an APS-C camera. How much more bokeh do you want? And remember, bokeh mainly has to do with the lens choice and the distance between you, the subject and the background. Besides, if you think the background blur is more important than the subject, there is something seriously wrong with your shooting style. Listen, those who want to use full frame cameras should do so. But don't be fooled into thinking that an APS-C sensor crop camera would be insufficient or not seen as professional. Enjoy taking pictures and bring the camera that you are most connected to and that meets your needs. In my case, this is an APS-C sensor camera. Will I ever use a full frame camera again in the future? 
That's quite possible, since I'm too curious by nature. But for now, I feel best with the crop sensor camera. Hopefully, this video doesn't come across as a rant, because that's certainly not the intention. Have you ever made the switch from full frame camera to APS-C crop sensor camera? Or are you considering it? Then be sure to tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.